Hallelujah. If you could turn your Bibles to Daniel chapter 6. If you could turn your Bibles to Daniel chapter 6. Tabby, come. You can have my wallet if you want. There's no money in there. You got it all. But <laughs> you can have the wallet too. <laughs> Turn your Bibles to Daniel chapter 6. Um, do me a favor. Yeah, come on. Stand up on your feet. We're going to read a little bit of read a little bit of text this morning. Thank y'all for being here. Thank you so much for being at God Chasers Church. I'm just grateful for you. I, I, I'm so elated that you are here today. Um, so I want to thank all you guys for being here today. I, and I, 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 I'm going to help you today, man. I'm going to help you today. I'm going to help you today. This message that I want to preach into your hearing today, I want to, um, I believe it's going to help you all year long. And I believe that some of y'all will refer back to this message. When you're feeling down, you're going to refer back to this message. When you're feeling lost, you're going to refer back to this message. When you're feeling depressed, you're going to refer back to this message. When you feel like, um, going back to your old habits using using your old language <laughs> I believe God's going to refer you back to this text today and uh, so I'm going to read a little bit um, and then I'm, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to read this whole chapter we've been doing that y'all y'all noticed that we've been doing that um but I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna skip ahead for the sake of time. But uh, I'll, I'll come back and explain it all. Okay? Y'all with me? Okay. Daniel chapter six. I'm gonna start reading at verse one. We'll skip around a little bit for the sake of time. It seemed good to King Darius to appoint a hundred and twenty princes. Some of y'all Bible say satraps. But this is it's just princes. Princes. Um, over the kingdom that they would be in charge of the whole kingdom that they would be in charge of the whole kingdom and over them three presidents some of y'all's bible say commissioners that's okay okay three presidents what's this say commissioners okay boom but it's 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 presidents okay not just one president three three presidents okay y'all with me of whom daniel was one this one here means the first one. This is akin to a first fruit. He was the first example. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Sometimes God will make you an example. Are you ready to be made? Are you ready to be made an example? I I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. Ah. Uh, that these princes might be accountable to him. That the king might distinguish himself among the commissioners and satraps, among the princes and, and the presidents, because he possessed an extraordinary spirit. And the king planned to appoint him over his entire kingdom. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Okay. Amen. I got to read number four. Okay. Then the commissioners and the satraps began trying to find a ground of accusation against Daniel. Oh, Lord. <laughs> In regard to governmental affairs. But they could find no ground. They could find no ground. They could find no ground of accusation or evidence of corruption. Um, uh, um. No evidence of corruption. Inasmuch he was faithful and no uh, negligence uh, or corruption was to be found in him. Then these men said, we will not find any ground of accusation against Daniel unless we find it against him in regard to the law of his God. Lord have mercy. They said the only way we can get him, the only way we can trick him is to get him to not serve God. I'm skip down a little bit. Um, in fact, well, let's skip all the way down to 16. Then 
the king gave orders and Daniel was brought in and cast into the lions. Woo, a lot of stuff happened. <laughs> the king spoke and said to Daniel, your God, whom you constantly serve, will himself deliver you. Now that's something right there. When the king say, I know that your God will deliver you. That, that's something when you live a life so, oh, so connected to God that the people around you will remind you who your God is. That the people who don't even know God, they just know him through you. They say the same, if God brought you out last time, girl, you remember last time when you thought you was all alone? Couldn't find nobody nowhere? And he brought you out said your God will deliver you a stone was brought and laid over the mouth of the lion's den uh oh we talked about that stone before right and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signet rings of his nobles so that nothing would be changed in regard to Daniel then the king went off to the palace and he spent the night fasting <laughs> and into and no entertainment was brought before him and his sleep fled from him he was up all night long then the king arose at dawn at the break of day and he went in haste to the lion's den. When he had come near the den to Daniel, the king cried out in a troubled voice. The king said, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you constantly serve been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel spoke. O oh, king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's Oh Lord. He sent his angel and shut the lion's mouths. <laughs> and they could not harm me. Oh, do y'all get that? Oh, he shut them up. And they couldn't harm me. I just want to stop right here and just say, God will shut your enemies up to the place. God will shut your <laughs> Well, they'll want to talk about you But they can't They'll want to say something oh, Y'all ain't ready for church today <laughs> uh, Let's give Oh no, 23 uh, Where are we? Where were y'all? Okay, 22. My God sent his angel and shut the, the lion's mouths and they have not harmed me. Inasmuch, I was found innocent before him. It doesn't matter what you think. I'm innocent before him. It doesn't matter how you feel. I'm innocent before him. It doesn't matter if you call me guilty. I'm innocent before him. His son died on the cross for me. You might not think I'm righteous, but I'm righteous before him. God came here to make me righteous. Him himself stepped off the balcony of heaven, got up onto a cross, and that made me righteous. It don't matter what you think. Lord have mercy. So Daniel was taken up out of the lion's den and no injury, whatever, was found on him <laughs> because he had trusted his God. Then, then gave orders and they brought those men who had maliciously accused Daniel. Oh, here it goes. Here it goes. See, God going to deal with you about how you dealt with me. That's why the Bible says pray for your enemies because whoever touches one of my little children should tie a rope around their neck tie it to a rock and jump into a river that's what Jesus said whoever messes with one of my little children tie a rope around your neck tie it to a boulder throw the boulder in the river that's what you <laughs> All right, so Daniel was taken up by the lion's den. No injury, whatever, was found on him because he had trusted God. The king then gave orders, and they brought those men who had maliciously accused Daniel, and they cast them, their children, their wives, uh, all, all their relationships, into the lion's den. And they had not reached the bottom of the den. They hadn't even got to the back yet. <laughs> Before the lions overpowered them and crushed their little bones. 
Then Darius wrote a decree to all the people and all the nations and, and men of every language who were living in the land. May your peace abound to you. I make a decree that in all the dominion of my kingdom, men are to fear and tremble before the God of Dante. I mean the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, the enduring God, and his kingdom is one which will not be destroyed and his dominion will be forever. He delivers and rescues and performs signs and wonders in heaven and on all. In heaven and on earth. Stop just expecting it to be fruitful in heaven. God said on earth as it is I want to see the same things that happen in heaven happen right here on earth. See, we have a reverse economy. God, I'm going to deal with that. On earth, gold is the highest form. It is the highest form of exchange. In heaven, it's the lowest form. The Bible says it's dirt on the ground. That's what gold is. You, you, need, to, you need to flip your expectations. For some of y'all, 2019 was your ceiling, but now it's your floor. God's moving you to a new. In heaven and on earth, who has also delivered Daniel from the power of these lions? So this Daniel, this Daniel, this Dante, this Tabitha, this Latuana, this Connie, Lord have mercy, this Roxanne. Okay, I, I could keep going. It's a lot of, it's too many of y'all. Enjoyed success in the reign of King Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we love you. We give you glory and honor. Lord, help me help them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I need you to high five seven people and just say, we coming out now. We coming out. We coming out. We coming out. We coming out. You can have your seat. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So I want to talk to you guys today uh, uh, in this finale uh, message uh, about coming out. I need you to get this because I, I, we talked about the dry bones. Y'all remember this? This was the week one. We talked about the dry bones and, and, and the dry bones coming out of the valley and how God was bringing you out. He was bringing you out like he brought the valley, like he brought the dry bones out of the valley of dry bones. God is bringing you forward. And in fact, God told me he's going to make an army out of your dead situations. He's going to build a whole army out of your death situations. So we talked about, we talked about this brother. We talked about Lazarus twice because I just needed y'all to get this and understand who Lazarus was and why he was so important to Jesus and, and why Jesus let him die. Because Jesus, if he was so important to you, why'd you let him die? I let him die so God could get glory. You don't understand that your circumstance, your situation was so that God could get glory. You thought it was about your story, but it's not about your story. It's about God's story. Amen. It's not your story. It's history. Does that make sense? Not your story. Your story fits in history. Does that make sense? And if you actually accomplish something in your life, then, oh, if you actually accomplish something, then your, then your story will be written in his story. that makes sense i want my story to be connected to his story i want uh, thank you jesus i want when people talk about me when people talk about who i was and how i live i want it to be connected to his story it would be useless i would be minute i wouldn't matter at all if my story wasn't connected to his story so, so, so we talked about Lazarus twice. Then uh, last week we talked about these three Hebrew boys. What are their names? <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, but we talked about that. That wasn't their names. Right? We did talk about that, right? Bonus, bonus for whoever knows their actual names. Woo! Everybody failed. <laughs> but that, these are the names that they were called, that they were called. And you got to be careful what you let people call you. You got to be careful what you let people call. Do not let people call you in relation to where you are. 
Let me say that differently. Uh, uh, do, not, do not let people b refer to you in relation to where you are like you're going to always be there. I'm not going to always be this. I'm not going to always be that. At some point, I got to grow up, and so I need you to refer to me as my... So, so as we move forward from there, I wanted to get this final, this sort of final message out about Daniel in the lion's den. Somebody say Daniel in the lion's den. In the lion's. Now, my problem with this message is that um, it's often the problem that you get with, Christen, uh, with, with Christendom uh, in, in relation to preaching anyway. My problem is that you've heard this message before. You've heard this story before. And because you've heard it, you might miss an opportunity to get revelation from it because you're like, well, he's just going to preach on lion's den. I wish he preached on something that's, you know, preach on the seven seals. <laughs> Y'all want me to preach? Y'all want me to preach on the seven seals, but I'm trying to help somebody in here. And I, and I need you to understand this, that the Bible says the word is alive and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. So I need you to understand that when you read the word, when you read the word, there are, uh, okay, you can write this down real quick. I'll go through these real quick, real quick. You can write, there are, as you read the words, there are five different interpretations you can get from the word, five being the representation of grace. There are five different interpretations you can get from the word. The first time you read the word, it is for information. Okay? First time you read the word is usually for information. I read it. I got some information. I learned some names. Places, some things. I got some information. I read the word for information. Okay? Information. Um... Rick, I'm sorry. Real quick, take the gating off my mic, please. I'm okay. All right. Uh, I'm sorry. I got to fix some. Stuff. This is doing some weird. Can y'all hear that? What's happening? Okay. Anyway, the first time you read it, you read it for information. Say that. The, the, the second time, now this might not be the second time, but this is what God is doing through this time. The second time you can read the exact same verse. You can read the exact same verse. Are y'all with me? And, and, and you receive illumination. Are y'all with me? So you receive illumination. And, 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 and this, is, this is important. This is higher than, than information. It's, it's higher than education. It's God using this word to, to relate to something that you can understand. Okay? Oftentimes you still haven't even got past the graph A. And I... I, I, I I can't talk about this right now, but uh, uh, you're reading it the first time, information, second time, illumination, third time, revelation. Revelation. Okay, that means that I've read this verse so many times, but now God is starting to reveal things that are happening in my life in relation to this verse. This is when we move past the graphe into the logos area, into the, into the spoken word, past what's written on the page. See, see, the Bible uh, is the preceding word of God. So there are things that are written on the page, but, but as you read deeper into it, there are things that are written on your heart. And God will connect what's written on your heart with what's written on that page. Does that make sense? So I want to go deeper. That's why you can't just read it once. You got to read it again. You got to soak it in. You got to meditate. David said, day and night, I meditate on your word. I've hidden your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. Does that make sense? So you get to the, you get to the point of revelation. Now God says, this on this page, this is how it applies to your life. That's revelation. Are y'all with me? The next one, tell me what, what I said so far. Number one? Number two? Number three? I just need to make sure y'all with me now, okay? The next one is transformation. Revelation always transforms something inside you. Revelation, real revelation. Hear, hear me? Whoa, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, see this, I can't go to the same church for 20 years and not change. There's no revelation there. If it was revelation, it would change something on Revelation must change something on the inside of me. Revelation has to change something. What is the point of revelation if it's not changing me? So the fourth step is transformation. That as soon as God reveals something to me, he reveals it through his word or he reveals it through his man of God. As soon as God reveals something to me, it should challenge me to change. If I'm not challenged to change, then we're still at a graphite level. 
We're still at an education level, information, education. You could just go to college. <laughs> this isn't college. This is a spirit. Oh, hear me. This is a spiritual gym, and I'm trying to make you strong in here. But you can't just lift weights and lift weights and lift weights and not notice any. Okay. All right. So we're not just reading for information now. Okay. So so now transformation. Now transformation is the final step before manifestation. That is when the promises of God, as you see, oh, this should make somebody happy. As you see the promises of God, as they start changing something on the inside of you, all of a sudden what God promised starts showing up in your life. All of a sudden you can see, you, it is revealed to you, the promises of God that show up in your life. All of a sudden Malachi 3 becomes real, real to you. All of a sudden, oh, see, but you haven't got that far yet. You got to get to that place where it becomes real to you. Does that make sense? So the final step is manifestation. That's when I see it. I see myself in those pages. I see those pages happening in my life. Does that make sense? So, so I don't want you, going back to Daniel, the story of Daniel, I don't want you to look at this from the, from the place of I understood this from Sunday school. Does that make sense? I want you to take a deeper dive. I want you to take a deeper dive into the relationship or, or what happens when, when a man is living his life completely for God. Okay? I want you to take a deeper dive into the lessons you learn when you start living your life completely for God. Listen, if you haven't been attacked, if you haven't been criticized, if nobody's raised up against you, you ain't doing it right. I want to be a good pastor, so I'm going to flip this on his head. If you've been attacked, if you've been criticized, if people have raised up against you, you're doing something right. I need you to get this. You are doing something correct. Think it not strange when you have to go up against diverse trials. Think it not strange when, when, when you are under attack or when you're under persecution. Some of y'all, when, when your boss come in to persecute you, I'm just trying to help you right here. You, you, as soon as he walk out, you should just say, thank you, Jesus. I'm going up. I'm coming out. Uh, uh, I want the world to. I feel it. I see it. It's happening in my life. And, 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 and what's, what's happening is the, the, the devil getting scared. The devil, some of y'all, man, the enemy is getting afraid of what God is doing in your life. The enemy is getting, a, you know, when, the, when God start really blessing you, the enemy will go see God. Oh, y'all need some Bible. Y'all need some Bible. The Bible says that when the angels were going back and forth, over the earth and going back to the heavenly places, the enemy, Satan, Satan, that's how you pronounce it really. I just don't, it is, it's, it's Hebrew, it's Satan. Oh, anyway, it means accuser. Some of y'all think it means murderer, killer, adversary. No, it means accuser. The devil don't got no power. Oh, I'm giving y'all this. The devil just a tattletale. That's, that's his power right there, to tattletale on you. He, go, he went up, the Bible says he went up and talked to God and says, God knows everything, sees everything. He understands why you're here. You, you didn't want to be around me when you could be around me. While you're around me right now, God said, you've been looking at Job, huh? He said, it's because he blessed. That's why he good, because he blessed. God said, well, no, no, no. No, 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 I, 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 I believe that he's righteous, not because he blessed, because he loved me. So the devil said, no, if you take away the blessing, hear me right here. He said, if you take away the blessing, then he will curse you. Some of y'all, you're in this place right here where God is seeing if you love him. He's trying to find out, do you love me or do you love stuff? Some of us have got so satiated with stuff. That, that, that we, we don't truly, truly love God. We love stuff. He said, if you seek my face, you'll get my hand. So, <laughs> Daniel is in this place and he is beginning to be persecuted. Now, the problem is, Daniel is so good 
He is so good. He's so faithful. He's so loyal um, that the king loves Daniel. Now, this is a commercial. It's not in my notes, but I want to help you right now. You, I want you to get so good at your job. I want you to get so good in relationship, so good with, with people that the king loves you no matter what. And that all people can do is accuse you, but, but when they go look at your time card. Now, I must admit, if they gathered everybody together to go look at my, not my time card, but you all know what I'm saying. I, I would be found at fault. I don't do everything right. I'm not one of those pastors that's going to get up here and tell you I'm, I'm perfect. You not. You need to try harder to be like me. That's not, you know, that, that's not where I'm going. We all trying hard to come out. Me too. Me included. But the Bible says that when they went to look at Daniel's records, they could not find any fault in him. I want you to get to the place where, you, where nobody can find fault in you. The Bible calls this above reproach. Somebody say above reproach. Okay, reproach in the Greek means to be pointed at with a finger. To be pointed at with a finger. This is what it means. Okay, this is the translation. You, you, you are in reproach. You are in reproach. You are in reproach. Uh, 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 this is what our relationship to God is. It's reproach. We, we all sinners. Right? We all sinners. But we need to be working to be above reproach. The Bible says we need to be working. You can bring that down just a little. Uh, we need to be working to be above reproach. What's that mean? Above finger pointing. Can't nobody say I was with him because I wasn't even there. Can't nobody say that I was with her because I wasn't even there. I'm above reproach. You can't say, no, no, no. You, oh. If they check the record, are you going to be found above reproach? That's what I want to know. If they check the phone record. If they check the Facebook record, help me, Rick, help me, help me. If they check the Facebook record, are you going to be found above reproach? If they check your internet history, oh, start the car, start the car, I got to go. They gonna... <laughs> are you going to be found above reproach? Some of the arguments that you keep having trying to say I'm innocent, you'll be less able to have somebody point their finger at you if you were. The Bible says Daniel was above, somebody say above reproach. He was above reproach to the fact that they had to get the king to create some dumb rule that, that nobody could pray to uh, anybody other than the king for 30 days. They had, to, they had to come up with some stupid rule, some stupid thing. And, and oftentimes, I need you to hear me because this happens in the world. You, you, people come up with some stupid thing that you should or should not be doing and you try to fit in. You try to fit in to whatever they say is the right thing. This is, you should be doing this or you shouldn't be doing that. And, and God said, no, I don't want you to fit in. I want you to stand out. I've called you to stand out. So you're going to have to step out on your faith. You're going to have to step. Listen, I, 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 I want to I wanna, I wanna ask a question. If it, was, if it was a crime to be a Christian, could you be found guilty? If they started arresting people. For being a Christian, would they knock on your door? Or would they say, no, nah, she, she a misdemeanor Christian? <laughs> no. I, 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 I want to know where the felons at. <laughs> oh! Y'all just cheered at being called felons. That's so crazy, man. I love this church. Y'all are the best, man. I was like, where are the felons? Everybody. Oh! <laughs> so. <laughs> but it should, if it was a crime to be a Christian, some of us wouldn't even be found guilty. Some of us, there's not enough evidence to convict. Now, you got to acquit. 
That's not enough evidence. No, I want to be found guilty. Amen. I want to be found guilty. I want to be found guilty because I am guilty. That's why Jesus had to come and die on the cross for me because I am guilty. I, I, here, here it is right here. I plead guilty. I plead guilty to being a sinner, but to accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and knowing that now I am righteous, now I am different, now I am changed. I used to be this, I'm not anymore. I'm an X-Man. I used to be this, I'm not anymore. Y'all with me today? So now, Daniel has been found guilty of this thing and, and the king doesn't want to put him in jail because he loves him. He doesn't want to. How many of y'all are fruitful servants? So fruitful, so fruitful. Hear me right here. That they, don't, that they wouldn't even want to put you in jail because they need you. I want to be in that place. Amen. I want to serve in that place. I want to be so useful and, and that people, oh, Jesus, that when I'm missing, people got to call me and say, wait, wait, hey, what's. When I took a couple of days off, they got to call me and say, hey, man, oh, we need you. We ain't done none of this since you left. Some of y'all hate that. You go. You come back into your job, you're like, y'all didn't do none of this? They're like, nah, that's, my, that's your job, amen. <laughs> so, so they throw Daniel into the lion's den. They throw Daniel into the lion's den. And here we find Daniel in the lion's den, and that was my introduction. <laughs> so I want to give you... <laughs> <laughs> I want to give you, you can, and you can write this down. I want to give you seven lessons from the lion's den. Seven lessons from the lion's den. And I hope we got the slides. Did we get the slides transferred? Okay, I got a thumb. I was looking for the next slide thing right here. But I just want to make sure I'm good, okay? Seven, seven, seven lessons from the lion's den. I want you to learn what it looks like to be a leader. I want you to learn what it looks like to be a leader, but know that your leadership might get you in with the lions. I want you to learn what it looks like to be a leader, but know that your leadership just might get you thrown in with the lions. Are y'all ready for these? Okay, here we go. Number one. Let's put this up on the screen. Number one. The ladder to leadership. Say the ladder to leadership. Brings influence and exposure. Okay, the ladder of leadership brings influence and exposure. Say that one more time. Why does that matter? Why does that matter, Pastor Dante? Okay, influence, influence is wonderful. Now, I've been talking about this a lot, and I don't want to get on my uh, influence soapbox, but if you don't have influence, you're not a leader. Period, point blank. I don't care what your title is, what you call people, whatever. If you can't get people to move in a certain direction, you're not a leader. You call yourself whatever you want. I'm cool with it. Call yourself pastor, apostle, teacher, whatever you want. If you bishop, such and such. I don't. I can't wear wear your liturgical gear. But if you can't move the crowd, if you're not an MC. Wave your hands in the air. And, and see, no influence. Not one of y'all just, I couldn't get a nothing, no influence at all. This, what, this, I gotta work on my influence. MC, MC, some of y'all grew up when I grew up, some of y'all grew up around that time. Some of y'all act like y'all did, but y'all didn't. It's okay, you can keep pretending. Anyway. <laughs> Start the car, damn y'all in trouble. Um, <laughs> MC, MC, they say, they would say, MCs can move the crowd. It is an idea that I can move the crowd, that when I speak, things happen. When I speak, people move. And a lot of times, listen, hear me right here. Uh, uh, man, uh-oh, brother, dad, you speak, nobody moves. That's an issue. That's an issue. That's an issue. You, 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 you should be operating from such a place that your leadership brings influence. Your leader, leaders lead. And I don't want to just be titled a leader and not have actual influence. Does that make sense? 
Are y'all with me today? Okay, I, I could go deeper right here, but I'll save it for our equipped leadership conference coming up in March, right? That's good, right? Yeah. Okay, so if you want to be a leader, March 7th, okay? I know I want to see you on March 7th. Okay, uh, okay, so, so get this. Um, the, the ladder of the leadership brings influence, okay? But it also brings exposure. If I sit down there with you guys. <laughs> hey, Corinne. Hey. How are you? Okay. See, this is my problem. See, they even tried to put the camera. They see you, you see they tried to put the camera on me? Yes. No, this, put the camera back on the stage. Stop trying to. You're messing up my illustration. Okay. Get this, though. If I sat here, my, my, uh, y'all really put the camera back on the stage. I don't have no influence in this church. I got zero influence in this church. I couldn't get y'all to wave y'all hands. Now I can't get them to put the camera back on the stage. Lord have mercy. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay. Somebody fired. Okay. No, I'm kidding. Okay. Okay. Hear me right here. It doesn't matter how loud, how loud I'm speaking. Oh, husband, hear me right here. It doesn't matter how, if I'm, not, if I'm not raised to a certain level, if I don't walk at a certain level, I'm indistinguishable from everybody else in the crowd. Oh, Lord, y'all not hearing me. And, I, and so if you're indistinguishable, don't expect to be followed if you're indistinguishable from everybody else in the crowd. Don't expect people to stand behind you if you're indistinguishable. If you do what everybody else does, then nobody will ever follow you. Does that make sense? So I have to be distinguishable. Now, when I stand up on my feet, all of a sudden you have a different level of exposure and you can see me and now respond to what I say. When I say, just wave your hands in the air. Oh, see, there we go. Now I got exposure. There it goes. But there's what exposure does. I need you to understand this. I have influence now because I'm out in front, but I also have exposure. Husband. Father. You, you, oh, I'm in charge. The Lord said, okay. Okay. You're also exposed. We see you not doing what you're telling us to do. You're out in front. You're not, you're, you, 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 you've set yourself out in front. And, and now people can see you and identify you. You know why the lion has a mane? So that he is identifiable. People can see who we following. I want to be able to see who, who I'm following. Are y'all with me today? Okay. So, so at some point now, but now when I step up onto the stage, now I am exposed. Now you can see my faults, my flaws, my stuff, my, my, my jacked upness. My, my jacked upness. Now you can see it because I'm raised up. Now, some of y'all want influence without exposure. That doesn't work. As soon as you step up on the stage of influence, you're going to be exposed. That's why some of y'all, hear me right here, and I mean this with all sincerity. Some of y'all, these lights will set you on fire. They'll burn up your whole life. Because all of a sudden, people start paying attention that weren't paying attention. People start both positive and negative. Because let's, let's go to the next one. Okay, y'all got that first one, right? The, the, ladder, the ladder to leadership brings influence and exposure. Now, go to the second one. Exposure will always bring fans and foes. Some of us want fans, but we're not ready for the foes. And if the fans make you happy, but the foes make you cry, you're not ready for leadership. You're not ready for leadership. You're not ready to start a ministry. You're not ready to start a business. You're not ready. For, <laughs> hear me right here. You're not ready for the people who are going to say, he don't know what he's doing. How he going to start a business? What do you mean? Well, She's not ready. She, she didn't even graduate from college yet. She, she still works. She only got six good months of uh, community college. How is she... And some of y'all hear that and it'll cause you to retreat. You're not ready for the exposure that comes with leadership. You're not ready. Keep your head down. If you're not ready to deal with fans and foes. Somebody say fans and foes. I got to be ready to deal with my fans and my foes. I want you to understand this. This is, this is it's not scientific, but I looked this up. I, I, I think it's pretty accurate. It says that generally... 10 to 20% of the people you know 
are for you. Generally, 10 to 20% of the people you know are for you. Generally, 10 to 20% of the people you know are against you. Yikes. Some of y'all got 5,000 followers on Facebook. It's 500 people against you. They your friend, but they're against you. And then, hear me right here, 60 to 80% don't care. And a lot of our problem is that we, we overestimate these two columns. And we don't recognize that it's just a bunch of people who don't care. They just don't care. They don't care. If you succeed, they don't care. If you fail, they don't care. Stop thinking you got haters. You don't got no there we go. Some of y'all ain't done enough to get it. Remember, we're talking about exposed people. You got to have a certain level of exposure to have a hater, okay? Now, there's some people who got exposure and they got haters. We were talking about, oh, commercial real quick. We were talking, I was talking to my son about the brackets that we're doing. Are y'all going to be here next week for the Greatest Love Song uh, series? That's going to be good. That's going to be good. Okay, so we've been doing a bracket like a like a 64 team bracket about the greatest love songs and we picked uh, 64 songs and we had them compete against each other and every day, if you've been on our social media, every day we've had two songs like compete against each other and what I, what I was talking to my son about is the level of hate that people have for Beyonce. No, I'm being serious now. I'm talking about true like vitriol. I said, look, I want to show you this. Two songs, two generally good songs went together. There was about 25 votes. And if one song won, so one song didn't. The Beyonce song had about 72 votes. People in there like, nah, I'm voting against. And she lost by a lot. She got blew out. And some people will say, oh, no, that's just because uh, Etta James is better than Beyonce. No, it's because people hate Beyonce. And hate, listen, hear me right here, hate will move people. Hate will activate people. You don't believe me? Get exposed. You don't get it. People who ain't never said or did nothing, all of a sudden, they will activate. They'll join other teams. They'll, they'll Voltron with somebody you don't like. They'll join together with people you don't like to hate you. This is significant now. But if you don't have exposure, you don't have you don't matter. Most people don't care. Does that make sense? But what I'm going to do is not focus on the 10 to 20% who don't like me. I'm really not concerned with the, 20, with the 60 to 80% who don't care. But I want to spend my time focusing on the people who I know who love me and who are for me and who care about me. And that's the people who I'm going to answer when they call. Oh, Lord Jesus. I just help myself. Those are the people who I respond to their Facebook messages. Those are the people. Hear me right here because it, I got to focus on the people who love me. I want you to focus on the people who love you. Does that make sense? But understand that exposure brings what? I'm not see this. Exposure brings what? Oh, Jesus. All right. <laughs> that was number two. What's number three? Let's go up. Number three, visibility means accountability. Visibility means accountability. This means that I have to, listen, hear me right here. The more visible I am, the more I need to be accountable for my actions. The more I got to respond to people who respond to me. The more I got to, oh, uh, hear me right here. So, some of us aren't accountable to anybody. And then you wonder why you don't have relationship. You, you. Then you wonder why they absent at your stuff. Because you were absent at their stuff. I, I amen myself. Woo, PD, that was so good. Woo. Visibility means accountability. It means that I, people care that you, oh, hear me right here. People care that you're with them. People care that you're for them. People want to know what your opinion is. They want to know the more exposure you have, the more often that people are going to respond to you and say, hey, what would you think about? 
I was talking to my son the other day. He gonna, he gonna kill me. <laughs> talking to my son, he's like, Dad, I just, can't, I just get so upset. People just see me in H-E-B and they'll just start telling me their whole life. <laughs> I said, I said, DB, there's a calling on the inside of you. Just because you haven't acknowledged it doesn't mean that people don't see it. And your visibility is going to have to cause you to be accountable to some people. I don't want to be accountable to people. Well, run then, Jonah. I don't know. Run. Keep doing it. It's the second option. Run. <laughs> I got tired of running. I got tired of living in wells and choking to death. I got tired of running. I was like, all right, Jesus, whatever you need, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm Whatever you want to do is good now. But, but I understand that visibility means accountability. That means I'm going to have to be accountable to some people, to some places, to some things. Because I, am, I have been exposed. God has lifted me up in such a way that I have to be accountable. Okay? So I need you to understand, even before you get thrown in the pit, God is going to cause you to be accountable. Does that make sense? And there are some Daniels in here. That the reason you haven't gone to the next level in your ministry, the reason you haven't gone to the next level in relationships is because you won't be accountable to anybody. Nobody you clocking me. All right. I don't want to tell people where I'm at and what I'm doing. Fine. Then you'll just be at home by yourself. Meanwhile, I'm like, Tabby, I'll be home and I'm swinging by the uh, Piggly Wiggly. That should take me about 45 minutes. Then I'm going to stop and get some gas. That should take three and a half minutes. Tab like, no, nah, he lying. <laughs> you generally know where I am. Okay, all right. <laughs> Can we? Don't look up here. I'm getting, I'm getting nervous already. No, number four. Okay, number four, real quick. Okay, peace is my promise. Now, I... Now, the first three were external. Are y'all with me? Yeah. These are things you can't do anything about. Visibility, exposure, as you climb that ladder, it is nothing you can do about it. People are going to decide they like you or don't like you. It doesn't matter what you do. I want to help you right here, boo-boo. It doesn't matter what you do. People are going to decide they like you or decide they don't, and you got to be okay with that. Does that make sense? But number four is about what's happening in you. So the Bible says it like this. He will give us perfect peace when we keep our minds stayed on him. Say that. He will keep me in perfect peace. Come on, say it with me. He will, give me, he will keep me in perfect peace if I keep my mind stayed on him. See, God is an if God. If then. If you keep your mind stayed on him, he'll keep you in perfect peace. What's perfect peace, PD? It's peace when all hell is breaking loose out here. When all the lions is going crazy and screaming and yelling, barking, roaring. I started to get a lion roar set up for y'all, but I would have scared some of y'all. Y'all would have ran up out of here. <laughs> but yeah, when, when, when everything is going crazy, when everything is going crazy, God will give you a peace, an internal peace. So much peace that people will be like, what's wrong with you? Because you didn't respond to the craziness that's been going on. And uh, if people will be like, no, it's got to be something wrong with you. Because you're not, no, I'm not. It's nothing wrong with me. I just got peace. Peace is my promise. If I keep my mind stayed on him, he promised me. Oh, y'all don't hear me. If I keep my mind stayed on him, he promised me peace. Some of y'all need to grab hold to the promise that is yours. The promise of peace. The promise of peace. The promise of peace. If you keep your mind stayed on him, you won't have so much depression. You won't have so much anxiety. You won't have so much anger. If you keep your mind stayed on him, then you get the promise of peace. Peace is my promise. 
Peace is my promise. Some of y'all need that. Y'all just need to write that on your mirror. Write that on the window. So that before you get in your car to go to work and everybody going to be. <laughs> Peace is my promise. Before you have to deal with Sheila and them. Or whoever they are at your job. Somebody shake. Oh, somebody said, yeah, Sheila and them. They knew exactly who I was talking about. Their name probably is Sheila. <laughs> she looks, she said, mm. <laughs> but you got to know that peace is your promise. Peace is your promise when your kids are acting crazy. Peace is your promise. Hear me right now. They're they not going to be bad forever. It's okay. Peace is your promise. Peace is your problem. Can you hold on to peace? Can you grab peace when you don't have enough money in the bank? Listen, I, I, I'm going to help you right here. Y'all want me to help you when you don't have enough money in the bank? Y'all ready for this? When you don't have enough money in the bank, worrying is not going to put more in there. Oh, that just, that just. Worrying is not going to put more. So you got to grab hold of peace. I'm going to put down my worries. I'm going to put down my burdens. I'm going to pick up peace. There's two things I don't worry about. One is things that I can't change. Why? Because I can't change them. Two is things that I can change. Why? Because I can change them. Everything else, I don't, I, don't, I don't worry about those things. Does that make sense? I don't worry about things I can't change because I can change them. I don't worry about things I can't change because I can't change them. Peace is my promise. Some of y'all need peace in your home. You, you, everything in your spirit, when you wake up in the morning, you got anxiety. Anxiety about your job. Anxiety about your finances. Anxiety about your kids. You need peace. Put down that worry and pick up your peace. Somebody say, peace is my promise. God promised to me, if I keep my mind staying on him, if I, start, if I just keep my eyes on Jesus, if I just keep focusing on God, all of a sudden peace becomes my promise. I know we live in a world where everybody's chasing everything. Everybody's trying to grab everything. But if you can just grab a hold to some peace, you'll be much better. Amen? Are y'all with me today? All right, let's move on. Uh, now, I need you to get this. I need you to get this next one. What, what number is this? That's, that was five. Now, what's this number? Oh, okay. Okay, sorry. That was five. I was looking up there. This is what? Okay, y'all with me. Okay, I may, I may have to wrestle for it. What, Pastor Dante? I may have to wrestle for it. Pastor Dante, what are you talking about? I may have to wrestle for it. God never said you wouldn't have to wrestle for it. God never said you. Pastor Dante, what, what do you mean? Well, in, in the book of Daniel, Daniel exclaims back to the Lord that the Lord shut the lion's mouth so they couldn't eat me because he shut their mouth. But he didn't say nothing about them not trying. He didn't say anything about them not trying. He just said the God, the angel of the Lord shut the lion's mouth. He didn't say they didn't try. Let me help you right here. Friends or foes, somebody going to try to eat you. Somebody going to try to take you down. It's okay. So there is going to be, in this life, you shall have tribulation. Tribulation. In this life, you're going to have a fight. And you might have to wrestle for what God has for you. But I'm looking for some Daniels in here that said, God, as long as I don't get eaten up, I might have to wrestle for it. I ain't afraid to wrestle for it. If you do your part, I'll do my own. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The Bible says he shut the mouth of the lion. He didn't say he kept them off you. I need you to understand that because I don't want to preach you into a place where you're going to think everything's perfect. You're going to have to deal with your Monday. Tomorrow, you're going to have to deal with your Monday. And you might have to fight for the promise that you know is yours. But I want you to st be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in God and knowing that even if I have to fight for it, God is fighting for me. And if God be for me, who can be against me? You got to have that in your spirit. Say that. If God be for me, who can be against me? If God be for me, who can be against me? That will lead me to number six. Number six is this. Your enemies are helpless. Your enemies are helpless. Your enemies are helpless. 
Bible says, listen, it says, it says, no man by any means shall harm you. It says you can deal with snakes. Oh, y'all, y'all better read your Bible. It says you can deal, it says that you can, you can deal with the adder. That's what the Bible says. This was a dangerous snake. You could deal with the adder. And the Bible says, though it may bite you. Oh, I need you to hear me. Though it may bite you, it won't be unto death. Though it may bite you, the Bible says you'll be able to just shake it off. Some of y'all been bitten, but you've learned this skill right here. Some of y'all been bitten. You've had to deal with some snakes, even in 2020 already. But you learned the skill to shake it off. I need y'all to get this. You need to learn the skill of, somebody just wave their hands like this real quick. You got to learn the skill to shake it off. Everything is not something. I feel like I'm helping some people in here. And if, I, if you can't say amen, just say ouch. Because everything is not something. something some, of, some of y'all get bit by garden snakes. And you go crazy. That snake is more scared of you than you are of it. Oh, I'm preaching. Y'all not getting it. I'm Oftentimes, the reason why they do attack you it's because they're afraid of you. You need to hear me right here. Oftentimes, the, the, the times you are attacked is because there is fear present. What I try to do is disarm their fear. Hey, man, how you been? Oh, it's good to see you, man. You doing all right? How's your boy? You disarm people. There's, just, there's no reason for you to fear me. You no, know, as I go up, as I become a leader, as I become exposed, I got to learn better how to disarm people. I was talking to a famous pastor, a, a pretty famous pastor um, uh, from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and and um, I, I saw him. He he know. He, I know him. He sort of knows me. Okay, he's very famous. Okay, I know him. I know him. I knew him before he was famous. He sort of knows me. He's, but he's gone, he's like, I mean, he's a big deal now. He's a super big deal. But I saw him a couple of weeks ago. Now, somebody introduced him, introduced me to him. They walked up, they said, they said, Pastor, this is Dante Banks. And he said, I know Dante. I was like, cool. <laughs> cool. All right. Cool. I was, I, I wasn't, I wasn't afraid, but understand something. When people go up to a certain level, it, it, it is intimidating. And so I might have been a little intimidated, a little, not that, Marika, just a little, like not, just a little intimidated, not like. But I was a little intimidated. He said, I know Dante. I was like, oh, well, that's not fair, because the man said my name, and then you said my name. <laughs> then he, he dabbed me up. He said, Hey, man, how's God chasers? Oh! He knows me. He knows me. He knows me. <laughs> he knows me. I was like, oh, man, the Lord is good, man. Blessed is the name of the Lord, you know. Yeah, man. man. How are you, man? It's good to see you, man. He disarmed me. I'm, I'm being, uh, I could have used me and, and talked about somebody else, but I'm, I'm trying to get y'all to hear. He disarmed, even if I did hate him, I couldn't no more. Even if I was angry at him, I couldn't be no more. That man disarmed me. He said, how's God chase? I melted. I was like, oh. oh. This very famous pastor. Knows our little church in San Antonio. That's pretty cool. He disarmed me because the truth is I couldn't do nothing to him. Any I can't do nothing about his success. I can't do nothing about what God is doing through him. I can't do, all I can do is be mad anyway. But he, he, he took that away. I couldn't even be mad. Now I'm mad because I can't be mad. Now I'm mad because I was acting silly in front of him. I was like, oh, we're doing, we're doing good. It's so good to see you. I just feel the anointing in this place, man. You guys. 
He disarmed me. You have the power to disarm people. As you go up, as you are elevated, learn that skill. I said, boy, this boy is good. He disarmed me. My wife and I will tell you, we was walking, we just happened to be walking in uh, going to a conference that T.D. Jakes was preaching in, and we were lost. We couldn't find him. We couldn't find the room. And T.D. Jakes was lost too. <laughs> and he couldn't find the room. And T.D. Jakes walks with like 30 people. They all walking around. I was like, none of these 30 people know where we going? <laughs> what good are they? <laughs> Didn't y'all rent this room? Okay. <laughs> Bishop, I was just joking. Don't, that's it. I'm, if you ever need me, I'm available. Okay. <laughs> okay, hear me, hear me right here. Hear me right here. But as we was walking, we didn't say nothing to him because we know the protocols. We didn't say nothing. And we just, you know, one of these men tried to jack us up, boy. And he said, hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> y'all doing all right? Thank y'all for coming out to the con. He don't have to say that. It's going to be 3,000 people in this room. He disarmed. Learn how to disarm people. Hey. Amen. Hey. Are y'all with me? Because the truth is, they can't do nothing about you anyway. You are inevitable. You're inevitable. Whatever God's plan is for you, it's for you. Are y'all with me today? Okay, so learn how to disarm people. Okay, and here's the final thing. I need you to get this right now. This is my last one, number seven. Say this out loud. Okay, my story brings God's glory. What does that mean? It means that whatever he has me in is so that he could bring me out. So that you could tell the story of how good your God, oh man. Whatever he put me in is because he has the power to bring me. I need somebody to shout on this. Whatever he put me in is because he has the power to bring me out. There is no sorrow that heaven cannot heal there is no problem no situation that you've been put into that god can't bring you out of so he must want to tell a story with your life he must want to connect your story to his story and I'm, I'm ha I don't know about you, but I'm happy about that. I'm happy about every trial, every tribulation, everything I ever went through because God used it for his glory. Every, if you want to know what I did, I'll tell you. If you want to know what I've been through, I'll tell you because I want to use my life to give God glory. The Bible says that at the end of that, even the king said, there's nobody like Daniel's God. There's nobody, I want somebody to say, there's nobody like Dante's God. I don't even know. I didn't even know if I believed in God. And then I saw what happened with Dante. I didn't know what, I didn't even know if I believed in God at all. Then I saw what God did through Dante. See, you don't understand that God is using your story. Just like Daniel didn't understand when he was in the lion's den. That God was going to use his story to help y'all. You don't understand. That God's using your story to help somebody else. You don't understand that God's using your story to set somebody else free. Can you trust him with the details? Can you trust him with the little, can you trust him with the little things? Can you trust him knowing that he's going to set you free? He's going to let you out and he's going to use your story to bring him glory. It's can you be faithful while you're in. It's not whether or not God's going to bring you out. I, I, I want to give y'all a little secret. I preached all five of these messages, four and a half. I preached all four and a half of these messages. Talking about how God's going to bring you out. But the truth is I was teaching you how to deal while you're in. Every single one of them was about how you operate while you're in. You coming out is inevitable. God's going to bring you out. He has a plan for your life. The promises of God are yes and amen in relation to your life. You have to wake up every day and just believe that. But while I'm in the lion's den, 
while I'm in the funeral parlor, while I'm in the, the valley of dry bones, I believe that God hasn't left me nor forsaken me, that he is for me and not against me. And if God be for me, you got to get that in your heart and get your head, get that in your head. That if God be for me, what, who, what, when, where, how can anything be against me? If God be for you, why, why do you worry so much? If God be for you, why, why do those trigger words work so well against you? People just say one thing and you, you often... Listen, you, you, you make your God weak. You make your God weak by how you respond. By how you respond, you make your God weak. You went through something and stopped going to church. You make your God weak. You went through an ordeal. Sure, it was tough. It was painful. It was trying. God's still on the throne. You made your God weak. Hear my heart right here. The Bible says, get, get this. He says, it says that he is with you. He'll never forsake you. He'll never leave you. Even in the lion's den. Even in the graveyard, even in the pit, even in jail, he'll never leave you. I know you get frustrated. I know you get angry. I know you get upset. I know you get mad. I know you have anxiety, but the truth is God is with you. And let me help you with one more thing. No external circumstance can change that. I put that peace in the middle because you need to have peace in the middle. Everything else is external. First three, external. Second three, external. Peace in the middle, that's you. That's you. You can't do anything about what's happening right here. The people who love you can't do anything about the people who hate you. It's me. I'm going to have peace right here. He'll keep me in perfect peace if I keep my mind stayed on him. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we love you. We give you glory. We thank you for peace, God. Peace in the middle of the storm. Peace in the middle. When all hell's breaking loose, God, I thank you for peace. God, I know there's some people in here who haven't experienced peace in a long, long time, God. Some people feel tired, exhausted, abandoned. Lord, but you said you never abandoned them. You would never leave them or forsake them. You said you were with them even into the ends of the earth. The earth will stop spinning before God leaves you. God, and I just want them to be reminded about the lessons from the lion's den. That you are for us, that you are with us. That yes, yes, when you lift us up, God, it's going to bring exposure, Lord Jesus. But as high as we are lifted, God, we'll make sure to lift you higher, Lord Jesus. We'll make sure to lift you higher, Lord Jesus, because it's not about us. It's all about you, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're bringing us out. Lord, I say a special prayer. In fact, that with every head bowed and every eye closed, do me this favor. Just repeat after me, everybody. Just say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Change my heart. Come into my life. Change my life. Father, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you said that prayer today, I believe that you are saved. In fact, we want to do something with every head still bowed and every eye closed because nobody's looking at you. No, and nobody's uh, nobody's is, is going to call excuse me. Nobody is going to pick on you or nobody's going to ask you to say anything or do anything. But what we want to do is acknowledge the fact that you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior today. If that was you, I'm going to count to three and I want you to just raise your hand as high as you can raise it. Uh, number one, it doesn't matter how you got here. It doesn't matter uh, who brought you here. The only thing that matters is that you are here. You were here to hear this message. Two, God is for you. He cares about you. He wants you to accept him as Lord and Savior. If that's you today, if you said that prayer for the first time, maybe you said it for the thousandth time, but you're saying, I mean it today. Three, raise your hand as high as you can raise it. Somebody's coming to pray with you. Come on, raise that hand as high as you can raise it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And the saints are rejoicing all over this building. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all get to the back. 
back. Y'all get to the back. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you glory and honor. We love you, Jesus. Now, listen. If you are still in this room and you say, Pastor Dante, I know, I know Jesus. I've had a relationship with Jesus. But I feel lost. And I feel abandoned. And I feel like I'm by myself. And I feel like I'll never come out of what I'm in. If that's you today, do me a favor and just, with every head still bowed, every eye still closed, do me a favor and just wave your hand. I just want to pray with you. I just want to pray with you. Come on, I just want to pray with you. If that's you today, I want to remind you that God is for you. And he said he'll never leave you. And he'll never forsake you. I'm going to send somebody to come pray with you. I'm going to send somebody to come. If you have your hand up, don't, don't, don't put your hand down. If you have your hand up, I'm going to send somebody to come pray with you. But listen, I want you to know that God has never left you. He has never left you and he never will. He never will. He's never lost a battle. He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. I have two right here in the middle. If somebody can go pray for them, please. I have two right here in the middle. If somebody can pray with them, please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I have one in a black shirt back here. If somebody can go pray with him, one in a black shirt back here. If somebody can go pray with him. And I'm going to pray for each and every one of you guys. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for the people who had the courage and the bravery to raise their hand, Lord Jesus. I want to remind you, God, that you are not, that they are not alone, Lord Jesus. I want you to remind them, Lord Jesus, that you are with them, that you will never leave them or forsake them, Lord Jesus. I know they've had some trying times, some trying situations situations Lord Jesus but I believe God that you are bringing them out in fact this this moment right here is revelation and revelation is going to turn into transformation and transformation into manifestation into manifestation and you are bringing them out in Jesus name I want to thank you God for bringing them out now if you know you've been brought out do me a favor and stand up on your feet and let's give God some praise all over this building come on if that's you if that's you, if that's you.